Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about edge tools. Uh, edge tools are the foundation of guitar making, historically at least, uh, if not any longer. Uh, and I think it's one of the parts of tradition that we really need to pay attention to and, and stick with. Uh, musical instruments have been made for thousands of years and they've been made mostly with very simple tools. Uh, even though the instruments themselves are not simple, the, the tools tend to be pretty simple. There are knives and planes and uh, all kinds of cutters that uh, are held in, in the hands and, and uh, used to uh, shave off little pieces of wood. So let's have a look at some of the parameters here and see if we can't come to an understanding of how to use edge tools the best way we can. So, first of all, the basic angle that we need to talk about in tools is the sharpness angle. So this is the angle that we grind uh, on, on the tool bevel in order to create um, a thin edge that will penetrate the material. As this angle closes up and gets narrower, it's easier to push into the material and it's also weaker and it also has less material to carry heat away. And I know many of you may not think so much about heat when you're cutting, but if you are cutting vigorously, repetitively with a tool, you may find that it gets pretty hot. In fact, um, sometimes a small metal hand plane can get too hot to hold. <laughs> if you're um, vigorous with it. So um, in, in woodworking in general, this is kind of a kind of a starting place anyway, this 25 degree sharpness angle. This is what we like to use for uh, chisels and plane blades. Um, and it's a pretty universal angle. Although I will say that um, for specialized things, like a scalpel um, or this um, industrial single edge razor blade, these sharpness angles are about half of that 25 degrees or maybe even less. Now we don't care so much because we don't have to sharpen these. We can uh, recycle them when, we're, when they're no longer usefully sharp. Uh, but it, it, sometimes it's really nice to have a, a tool that will penetrate easily and, and slice through a material when we're trying to part it. Not so much for general woodworking, but for other you know, mundane tasks around the shop. So the sharpness angle is determined partly by the quality of the material. In other words, in order for the tool to stay sharp, the steel that the tool is made out of has to uh, be alloyed correctly and hardened and tempered correctly so that it will, it will hold a fine edge that we take so much trouble to put on a, uh, an edge tool. The things that contribute to the longevity of an edge are the smoothness of the edge, the material, the, the style of steel, the alloy of steel that we're using, and of course the quality of the surfaces that we get when we sharpen it. So I can recommend Ron Hawk's book, The Perfect Edge, uh, as a wonderful, wonderful resource. Uh, those of you who haven't seen it, you can you know, get one or check it out from the library. It's exhaustive, beautifully researched. Uh, he involves metallurgists and all kinds of material scientists in his uh, quest to discover and explain all the intricacies of this. Uh, one of my favorite parts of the book is um, right at the back here where he, he shows uh, in great, uh, greatly uh, magnified images of tools that he had sharpened and he describes the methods and materials that he used to sharpen these tools and you can see the, the wide variety of results he's getting. When we think about um, these edges that he's photographing, you can see that not all of them 
are straight lines. Some of them look pretty craggy and jagged. And for, for edge tools and fine work, we really want to create this beautiful straight line of uh, molecules and a polished surface along that edge so that we have a nice strong edge with all the support that we can get to enable the edge to be long lived. And we will get into that in great detail in a, in a further segment, but let's just say um, there's some things about sharpening that are not covered in this book that I'd like to go into in great detail with you. Something that, uh, some things that I've discovered that have helped me greatly in my work life. In general, um, sharpening is considered um, by, by many people as a difficult thing. A lot of people are having trouble getting a good edge on their tools. Uh, sometimes they get a better edge than others. Sometimes the tool doesn't stay sharp long or um, they get frustrated with um, the geometry. So we're also going to have a segment on that where we're going to explain exactly how to get an edge uh, on almost any kind of tool with a minimum of fuss and time. And I feel that that's really essential to good instrument making because without a sharp tool, you can't take a good cut and um, you'll be um, tempted to look into um, other methods such as perhaps computer controlled something or other, which I don't think um, most of us should need in order to make beautiful musical instruments. The next thing we're going to talk about is the relationship of this sharp tool to the material. So if here's the material that we're going to cut, the, the next angle we need to talk about is right here, and this is clearance. We need some clearance angle in order for the tool to be able to penetrate the work and start uh, initiate and take a cut. You can imagine if this clearance angle were reduced to zero, the tool would just slide along without making any cut at all. How much clearance we need isn't as important as some other things. Um, certainly the quality of the edge is important and other properties of the edge that'll help it uh, help it persist and, and, and help us work for a long time. But the other angle that's super important is this, is this angle, and this is the rake angle. So as the rake angle gets bigger in this direction, it's a slicing cut. And as the rake angle gets smaller and approaches or comes to 90 degrees or even less, um, in which case it would be called negative rake. This is positive rake. So as the, as the rake comes up to uh, 90 degrees, now we're scraping. Um, and, and scraping is a different kind of cutting than slicing. Um, and we will also explore all of that uh, in a further segment. Scraping is a great big issue in guitar making. Uh, it's a super, super useful tool, um, very sensitive, can do amazing things for you. And there's a number of different kinds of scrapers um, that we can use, and we'll explore the way those are all sharpened and how they can best handle various guitar making jobs. All right, so normally with these considerations, we can describe pretty much any tool in any kind of woodworking cut. So these clearance and rake angles and sharpness angles are gonna be um, part of what we're looking at when we're looking at any kind of tool, whether it is a saw, a twist drill, a router bit, a scraper, chisel, plane, spoke shave, any, any kind of edge cutting tool that we're gonna use. We're gonna try and understand and optimize these geometries for whatever cut we're, we're trying to make, okay? So let's start with a simple kind of tool, uh, just a knife, all right? Um, really, you could think of all, all, the wood, all the woodworking edge tools 
are basically just knives. <laughs> They're just uh, handled in a different way. But you could think of it, basically everything's a knife. Now, this is the same tool as this one. As this one is as supplied. This one is um, uh, a hawk violin maker's knife, 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. And this is also the same knife. But I think you can see that uh, as supplied, there's a bevel on each side. Okay, and this is a standard way for the violin maker's knife to be supplied. And then this one that I've played with has a, a curved surface. So I've deliberately shaped this knife with a curving surface. And what that does is it allows me to follow a surface with a knife much better than you can with a, a tool like this with a, a, sh a hard edge on the back of it. So this will, this will sweep and scoop through the material and it's easy to steer and easy to control. So I suggest that if you have a violin maker's knife that you, you try to uh, shape these edges in this nice way so that, um, so that you can get more control out of the knife. Uh, also, it's useful to make the edge very slightly rounded so that there's a little bit of a curve in this direction. Not critical, but it seems to make it uh, more useful. And finally, it's nice to have a handle, although you could just wrap tape around it and it would be pretty much the same thing, I guess. Now, let's talk about a couple of specialized tools that I like a lot and, and that quite a, get quite a bit of use. Obviously, an industrial single-edge razor blade. Um, everybody knows what these are. And this is a surgeon's scalpel. And uh, these blades are, um, are replaceable and disposable. So when these get dull, you just recycle them and it you know, works fine. But anyhow, these tools have a sharpness angle that's probably around half or even less. So these sharpness angles are about 10 or 12 degrees. Um, and that means that they can penetrate uh, the material, whatever it is you're cutting, whether it's a strip of leather or rubber or paper, the, because the sharpness angle is so low, it can get into that material and, and take a nice cut. So those are knives. Um, it, you know, one, one in your pocket's always a good idea. And then, you know, the, you could think of these again, uh, here's a chisel and a gouge. These are um, also edge tools with a single edge that are guided by hand. And uh, for those of you who watched the segment on this um, seriously improved gouge project that I, I showed you, um, this also has a, uh, a curving surface on the bevel for the same reason that you can help, it helps you to steer the tool through the material. Okay. So there we are, the basics of tool geometry. And um, next, we're going to move on to cutters that are supported by a body.